Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will be looking into Azure Role-Based Access Control, in short, we also called as RBAC. To begin with that, uh, we will be looking into overview of the Azure Role-Based Access Control, what it is and what you can do with that, and followed by to understand about the more about Azure RBAC, how it's going to work like security principles and role definitions and the scopes and we will look into the how best we can assign multiple assignments let's say you assign more than one role what would happen what it's gonna uh, effective and we will be looking into that and then then we also look into dna assignment this is uh, just started it's a limited support on dna assignment i mean it's just started so uh, you have not much but you do have the dna assignment what happens uh, we will be looking into it and uh, we'll get get to understand of out of this lecture and also how technically the flow of the azure or back um, access like starting from the service principles or maybe user accounts and how it's going to acquire a token and what happens with the rest api all that uh, along with the arm and other assignments within technical steps uh, we're going to understand about the uh, this topic and that will conclude uh, by ending with the licensing requirements to begin with that what is role-based access control or in short Azure or back so access management for cloud resources is a critical function for any of the organization that is using the cloud services so by using the Azure role-based access control it will helps you to manage who has access to what Azure resources and what they can do with those resources what areas they have the access also it can determine and it can give you a granular access to that and if we take um, some of the examples uh, let's take some of the example to understand how we can give the permissions let's say you have a user who wants to manage uh, virtual machines in a subscription you can add that specific user to manage only the vms or let's say another user wants to manage uh, only virtual networks you can grant that kind of access or maybe let's say you have a, a SQL DBA group who just wanted to manage all the SQL databases in a subscription so if you want to grant that explicit permissions then you would be depending on our back also let's take one more example allow a user to manage all the resources in a resource group that means uh, he's gonna become as an owner within that resource group so he can delete or he can create he can do whatever the things he wanted within that resource group for example he can take uh, full control of the virtual machines websites or web applications or subnets all that and let's take one final example here you can allow an application to access all the resources within a group so these are the controls what you can use now let's jump into how azure or back works so definitely uh, you need to understand in the back end how this or back works so the way you control uh, resources because if you take in the previous uh, examples what we have done is we try to control the resources by using our back and then we assign a specific role assignments that's a key concept to understand so now uh, it's how permissions are enforced and the role assignment consists uh, is uh, basically in a three different um, steps it would take in the background so let's take the three different principles or the elements the first one would be the security principles so when we talk about the security principles we are talking about either a user object or maybe group or maybe service principle or managed identities so when we talk about any of these things uh, these are the security principles will be targeting so these are the objects who has a profile or maybe who has the access within the azure active directory or from your on premises we will onboard those security principles and then we apply a role definition against to 
these security principles so when we talk about the role definition yes a role definition will have a several built-in roles you can also create your custom roles also but when we talk about the first as the built-in so built-in will have like owner contributor or reader or backup operator security operator or virtual machine contributor there are a lot of uh, different default roles are already available and you can use those role definitions so what would happen is in the back end um, when we will come to know actually we will be looking into the the flow control as the just before to the licensing slide then you would be understanding more about this but for now uh, to explain here these are the role definitions will be depends on ARM templates or ARM access layer which will grant you a granular access against to your security principles so that's where the role based uh, definitions will come into the picture let's say you don't have a cust uh, you don't have a built-in role based access then you can create your custom access uh, or a role definition and assign for the security uh, principle so the security principle will be part of this role definitions and then they can for example they can read the support tickets or virtual machine operator these are the custom uh, roles or custom role definitions you can create on your own so let's take the final one that's a scope so where you're going to apply these role definitions so as you know that the top layer would be the managing uh, your entire resources starts from the management group and then followed by subscription and then resource groups and then you will be placing all the resources in your resource groups so this is how the structure will be there so you can apply these role based uh, definitions uh, at different layers let's say you can apply the security um, from the subscription layer or maybe a resource group layer or from the management group layer so that's where we talk about the that's where we can apply the role based access uh, that's how it's gonna work now let's have a look on um, how if we put it as this as a consolidated how it looks like so what happens is you have the security principles and you're applying let's say uh, example as the marketing group so what would happen is uh, in this you have an action to either delete or write or uh, elevate access uh, for the contributor or uh, maybe what happens is with this uh, marketing group can have a definition here like a contribute role or owner or reader all these are built in or the custom rules can be created so these are applying for a specific scope so in this case management group level or maybe subscription or resource group layer so this is how it looks like at the top level and now we will jump into uh, what happens if you try to assign a multiple roles let's take one user who is part of uh, who has the access for the subscription layer as the contributor and also for the same user you applied as a reader at the resource group as you know that uh, subscriptions under that you have the resource group and under that you have the resources so what happened this user have a contributor role assigned at the subscription layer so what would happen if you apply explicitly even resource group also uh, as a read so at this layer you have a read but top level you have the full permissions so what that is the contribute permission so what happens is you will be getting contributor rights because that's the top layer you applied full rights uh, as a contributor it will get inherited so that's how it's gonna work now let's talk about the DNA assignment so coming back to the DNA assignment you can block by creating a DNA assignment uh, some of the actions can be uh, performed when you explicitly assign DNA uh, users and also DNA assignments can take the precedence over the role assignments do you remember that point so when you're trying to assign a DNA that's gonna take the uh, precedence 
Now let's understand how actually role-based access determines in the backend. So we talked about the principles, we talked about the security principles, we talked about the role definition, we talked about the scopes. Now let's put all these three things and better understand how the flow will go. So to understand that, let's jump into uh, the first point. If you see here, a user or the security group or maybe a sp or service principal or managed identity. So either any of these, what happens is A is gonna acquiring a token from Azure Resource Manager. In the backend, Resource Manager is the key. So it will acquire a token and then the token includes a user group membership, uh, including the transitive group membership. And followed by the user makes a REST API call to Azure Resource Manager because uh, you see here the user actually acquiring a token to Resource Manager that's ARM and here he's making a API that's a REST API call method to Azure Resource Manager and with the token attached. So what would happen is since he has a token the ARM will retrieve all the role assignment list whether he's a DNA assignment or what kind of actions he's going to perform that will help us uh, the action what kind of an action to be taken next one would be the arm narrows further level of the role assignment uh, that's going to apply for that specific user or the group to determine what roles uh, the user has this resource so the resource uh, whatever the resources are there for that whether what kind of roles is coming from whether he's a contributor or read all that will be for the level of the narrowing will be done followed by as your resource manager determines if an action in the api calls to include in the roles of the user has to be this resource if that's the exact resource then uh, it will be no granted if not if the user doesn't have the role with the action requested scope access is not granted otherwise the normal uh, normally the user checks for the DNA assignment policy uh, if the DNA assignment policy is there it will simply say that hey you don't have a permission that's how it's gonna work and uh, that that way it's gonna uh, blocked and it will grant you and tells us the uh, blocked or if we have the access for that uh, ARM then the access will be granted so that's how it's going to work so coming back to the role-based access control we talked about overview and understanding of the RBAC and multiple role assignments and DNA assignment and RBAC how it's going to work with the flow and the last one is the license requirement coming back to the licensing it's completely free uh, to use any of the RBAC features. It's completely free for us uh, since it comes into the security. Uh, and this is uh, included within your Azure subscription. I hope this entire lecture is useful to understand about what exactly the Azure RBAC. And I'll catch you in the next lecture where we will be performing the demo.